Good morning, everybody. We are starting Mark 16. Today's Tuesday. We'll get it done this week. So, Mark 16, verse 1, it says, Now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices that they might come and anoint him. Um, I didn't mention it as we were going through before, but um, if you take Mark 15, 40, which mentions Salome by name, Matthew 27, 56, and John 19, 25, when you put those verses together, I will at least say it strongly hints that Salome is the sister of Mary, the mother of Jesus, who is also the wife of Zebedee, which would make her the mother of James and John, which would make James and John Jesus's first cousins. And that would add some flavor and interesting stuff because the fact that he would ask his cousins, I mean, John the Baptist was a relative too. So it's not this, it's not too weird. And they all lived up in the same area. Um, but also when, you know, Salome, well, we know the mother of James and John, it says, comes and asks Jesus, you know, let my sons be on your right hand and your left. And wouldn't that just be all the more fitting if it was family? You know, come on, Jesus, got to get the family in there. So I didn't mention that last time, but there you go. So they come to get spices. Now, <coughs> let's see how this would all play out. Um, it really doesn't matter what day. Um, we know, well, Jesus is crucified and a Sabbath was coming. So Friday at sundown, there's no time to go shopping. Everyone is preparing for Sabbath. The women wanted to do something for Jesus. So what do they do? They have to wait until Saturday night at sundown when the Sabbath ends. And typically, and still in Jerusalem, um, if you go, it's always fun to go to Ben Yehuda Street because it's like a modern shopping street. Um, but going on Saturday at sundown because everything kind of pops open for a short stint after Sabbath. So everyone kind of busts open, they use some fun stuff, and then it kind of dies back down. And so the stores probably did the same back then, where people would open up for a little bit because people couldn't sell during the Sabbath, but now they're open. So they got their spices, but by this time it's late. So their plan, buy the spices Saturday night, head over to the tomb early Sunday morning. Very early in the morning, it says, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they said among themselves, who will roll the stone away from the door of the tomb for us? But when they looked up, they saw the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You see Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee, and there you will see him as he said to you. So they went quickly and fled from the tomb, for they trembled and were amazed, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. My tomb. And so the stone had been rolled away. Da, da, da. There you go. They had these big stones, and they would. They'd roll them away. And no, the garden tomb today, they have no idea where the stone is at. And that's simply because a big, flat stone like this is good building materials. And people weren't afraid over the generations to steal stuff away from tombs. But there are a few places in Israel today where you can still find the big, round stones that go in front of tombs. There's more than one place where they still have that set up and you can see it. There's often one as you're driving from the coast in towards Megiddo, uh, you'll typically drive by one on, on your bus ride and they'll usually point it out to you. Now, take out my things, you'll note inside the tomb, and everything's backwards for you guys. If I go this way, it's a little easier. You go into the tomb and you turn right 
and then you end up with this burial chamber area right here. And so, sure, it could just be semantics, but, you know, one thing about the garden tomb that just plays in with the words, because there's a debate sometimes between the garden tomb and the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and the tomb that's located there. And the garden tomb, you know, many will say, well, the style of the tomb and whatnot is more typical of times past. Well, again, when you're rich like Joseph Arimathea, you can build your tomb however you want. But the fact that as you go into the tomb, the burial section is off to the right. Here, where it says they entered the tomb and there was this angel, this man in white, and he was on the right side. And so you go into the tomb and right there to the right is where Jesus would have been buried. And it'd be as if the angel was sitting right there where Jesus' body had lain. So it kind of all plays out uh, nicely as we see. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Ah, we'll see how we break it all down. So there you go. A little bit about them and how it all plays out going out to the tomb. Like I said, I think we're just going to uh, walk through at least this last little section where we're just learning about the Lord, his crucifixion, and his resurrection. Just stick into the facts and what we know about it so we can best understand what happened. God bless you guys. I will see you guys tomorrow morning.